Thanks for joining us today at Synthesis Workshop. I'm your host, Alicia, and for today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Wenjin Yu. Wenjin received his Bachelor's of Science in Chemistry from Yangzhou University, followed by his Master's of Science from the Shanghai Institute of Organic Chemistry under the supervision of Li Yang Yin. He's currently a doctoral student in the group of Ruben Martin at the Institute of Chemical Research of Catalonia. And with that, I'll hand it over to Wen Jin. Welcome, and thanks again for joining us. Hi, thanks for your kind introduction. It's my pleasure to share with you my latest work on the alpha Doppler oxidation of benzomines with trifluoromethylenes. In recent years, the introduction of gene dafluorocans into drug molecules is becoming a trend due to its biological interest. Indeed, the gene dafluorocans could serve as bioesters or ethers, and the incorporation of this motif into drug molecules could help to improve some properties, such as bioavailability, lipophilicity, and metabolic stability. In fact, they do have some bioactive or drug molecules which contain this type of motif, such as some inhibitors. Traditionally, gene dafluorocans could be synthesized from precursors, such as gene dafluorocohlides or sulfones. However, these precursors are normally not commercially available and sometimes in the multi steps to synthesize. Alternatively, gene dafluorocans could be synthesized through the deoxyfluorination of ketones. However, this type of methodology is limited by its harsh conditions and expensive ranges. Another way to synthesize gene dafluorocans is the direct dafluorination of sp 3 sage bonds. However, this type of transformation will suffer from the selectivity issues, such as side selectivity and mono or dafluorination selectivity. Recently, the synthesis of gene dafluorocans from trifluoromethyl compounds has become a trend for several reasons. Firstly, this is just one step transformation and has high end term economy. Secondly, there are abundant precursors which contain trifluoromethyl motifs. Thirdly, trifluoromethyl group could also be observed in a series of drug molecules and achieving the late stage functionalization of those drug molecules through safe bound functionalization would be appealing for medical chemists. However, to achieve this transformation, they do have some challenges. Firstly, the safe bonds are relatively strong, which means it will be tough to break them. Secondly, we go from the relatively stable safe bonds in trapeomethyl compounds to the less stable safe bonds in dipleomethyl compounds, which means it will be difficult to avoid the continuous defluorination. Despite the existence of these changes, chemists still find some strategies to fulfill this transformation. For instance, Koenig, G, and several other groups have achieved the defluorinative cross-coupling of trapeomethyl compounds with olefins and defluorohydrogenation of those compounds by using photocatalysis or electrocatalysis. Moreover, Band Group has fulfilled the defluorinative validation of trifluoromethyl errands by using fluoride salts as promoters. Impressively, Chang Group from SLC has reported the pre-demicalized cross-coupling of aeroborans with trifluoromethyl errands. Notably, in this methodology, the platinum complex also enters as a photocatalyst. Despite those notable advancements, the direct cross coupling of trapeomethyl errands with sp3 sage bonds was unexplored, yet highly rewarding. In this case, we wondered whether we could fulfill this goal through a simple yet powerful strategy. In recent years, two of the early alliances which were initially exploited by Walsh Group have been proved to be efficient superelectric donors. This intermediate could be got easily from benzoamines and could undergo single electric transfer with a substrate to generate the corresponding radical anions. 
In spite of those work, we wondered whether we could achieve the differentiative alpha doppler oscillation of prior means. Through this transformation, we could get the alpha doppler related means in a simple manner. It's worthy to know that alpha doppler related means are also important patterns in medical chemistry. In fact, some bioantil or drug molecules do contain this type of motifs. With this design in mind and after careful optimization, we got the optimal conditions which were detailed here. The benzene amines could undergo condensation with imine 2 to generate an imine intermediate. Without isolation, this intermediate could undergo cross coupling with triplomethyl compounds by using lithium HMDS as base and DME as solvents. After writing for two hours, hydrogen chloride was used to do deportation, and after 12 hours, sodium hydride was used to release the desired prior means. Some selected representative examples have shown the generality of our approach. For instance, iron bromides and iron borings were well tolerated, which provided handles for further functionalization through the well-established metaphenalized cross-coupling protocols. Moreover, some function groups, such as methyl group, diphenyl methyl group, triphenyl methyl group, and some criterion rules, such as pyridines, sulfans, and could be well tolerated in our variations. Similarly, a series of triphenyl methyl errors could also be applicable in our strategy such as triphenylmethylnephylines, biphenyls, and pyridines. Moreover, some functional groups such as sulfamides, phosphates, alkanes, alkynes, and even francos could be well tolerated in our strategy. In order to further illustrate the applicability of our protocol, some substrates which were derived from natural products or drug molecules were also tested and it delivered the corresponding products from moderate to good use. Impressively, our ration could be carried out in 10 gram scale and could got the desired product in 84% isolated yield. Notably, for the substrates, which contain multiple triphenylmethyl motifs, our strategy could start slightly range with only one triphenylmethyl motif, according to the electrical properties. Furthermore, our strategy could be beyond the utilization of triphenylmethyl errands as compounds. In fact, when using triphenylmethylated olefins or gene difluorocans or substrates, the corresponding defluorinative coupling products could be formed in high efficiency. Then, we did some experiments to shed light on the plausible mechanism for our transformation. Both of the intermolecular and intramolecular isotope labeling experiments showcased the primary KIE, which indicated the deprotonation should be involved in the red termine step. Moreover, EPR signals could be observed during this reaction, which indicated the radical nature of this transformation. Besides, the undoubt of alpha amino radical could also be observed when using table or quenching ranging, which showcased the intermediacy of open shell species prior to the CC bound formation. Based on those experiments, we get a plausible mechanism the prior means could undergo protection then deprotonation to generate the two other allyl-anions, which could serve as superelectric donor and undergo single electric transfer with triphenylmethyl errands. After release the fluoride anions to generate the persistent radical 3 and transient radical 4. Then those two priority matched radicals could undergo cross-coupling, then deprotonation to generate the desired product. Finally, I would like to thank my PhD supervisor Ruben for his strong support during my PhD study. And I would like to thank all my colleagues 
for their help. Lastly, I also want to thank the CC Fellowship from our motherland for the finance support. That's all, thank you. Thank you to Wenjing for the spotlight on alpha difluoroalkylation of benzylamines. If you would like to learn more, please visit Wenjing's recent publication in Angavante Kemi. If you've enjoyed this episode and would like to support our podcast, please consider subscribing to us here on YouTube and following us on Twitter. Thanks again, and we hope to see you next time.